ladies and gentlemen, we're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined my son Jordan Spivey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be going over Ohm's Law. So let's get started. First, let's start off with electric current, and that's the continuous flow of electric charge. And the unit for electric current is the ampere, which the symbol would be A. And there are two types of electric current. First, we have alternating current, and this is the flow of electric charge that alternates or switches its flow. And for example, electric current in your home, office building, and schools are all examples of alternating current. So let's take a look at that. If you notice in the illustration right here that the alternating current, it alternates or switches its flow from left to right. So it goes back and forth. And that's why we call it alternating current. And then our next one would be direct current. And this is an electric charge that flows only in one direction. And examples for this would be a flashlight, TV remote, or a battery operated toy car. So let's take a look at direct current flow. And if you notice in this example right here that that electrical current is only flowing in one direction. It's not alternating back and forth. It only goes in one direction. And now let's take a look at voltage or potential difference. And voltage and potential difference are interchangeable. That means that you can use either or because they mean the same thing. And they both mean that this is the work that is done to transfer a positive charge from one point to another. It is measured in volts and your unit would be V. And there are three main voltage sources, which are batteries, generators, and solar cells. Batteries convert chemical energy into electrical energy and have a positive and negative end. The negative charges are pushed out of the anode, which is the negative part of the battery through the circuit up to the cathode, which is the positive part of the battery, and then back through an electrolyte, a liquid or gel that contains ions. And ions are elements with positive or negative charges. And the amount of charge pushed depends on the voltage. So if we take a look at this, here's our anode right here where we have our negative end of the battery. And those electrical charges are pushed through the anode and they're pushed up and they go through this resistor right here which is this light bulb and then they continue to flow and they move up to the cathode which is the positive part of the battery and then they move through this electrolyte and this is where those ions and those positive negative charges are at and then their flow starts all over again and then let's take another look at it and we looked at it in the last illustration so here's our voltage source right here and it pushes those electrical charges and it pushes those electrical charges through this current circuit and you have this flow of electrical charges which is our current and it goes through this load and another name for our load is a resistor it means the same thing so a load can be a light bulb it could be an iron anything that you would plug into a wall or anything that resists the flow of electrons would be considered a load but overall, this is what our voltage does. It pushes those electrical charges. So if you notice, you have a three volt battery, a nine volt battery, and a 12 volt battery. And the higher the voltage, the faster or more it pushes those electrical charges. And now on to resistance. And resistance means to resist the flow of electrical charges in a material. And the unit of resistance is the ohm and our symbol would be this omega sign right here. And resistance slows down the current due to electrons bumping into each other as they travel through a wire which converts some of that kinetic energy into thermal energy. The thicker the wire, the lower the resistance because more electrons can flow. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance because electrical charges have to travel farther. And as temperature increases in a metal wire, the resistance increases due to more kinetic energy being converted into thermal energy. So now, let's take a look at these concepts. So resistance slows down the flow of electrons. So if you look at a light bulb, in the middle of the light bulb, you'll see this metal piece with a bunch of coils wrapped around. And this right here is called the filament in a light bulb. And what a filament does is slows down the flow of electrons. So when it slows down this flow of electrons, it generates a lot of heat, heat which in turn generates light. And the scientist that was famous for actually improving the filament was Louis Latimer. And I'm not sure if I spelled his name correctly, but his name is pronounced Louis Latimer. 
And then it says the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance because, because more electrons can flow. And this makes sense as well. If you have a thick wire, you can have a lot of electrons to flow through it. But if you have a thin wire, that means you can have a little or a few amount of electrons to flow through it. So that a thin wire decreases the flow of electrons and a thick wire increases the flow of electrons. So the larger the wire, the lower the resistance, the smaller the wire, the greater resistance. And then it also says the longer the wire, the greater the resistance because electrical charges have to travel farther. So if we have a short wire like this, that means electrical charges don't have to move too far. But if we have a long wire like this, electrical charges have to travel even farther in order to serve their purpose. And then it says, as temperature increases in a metal wire, the resistance increases due to more kinetic energy being converted to thermal energy. Well, this makes more sense because you have more electrons instead of traveling through that flow of electricity as the wire heats up, they're turned into you have more thermal energy, which you have more heat energy actually being released from this wire. Now let's take a look at Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is the mathematical relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And so our formula for Ohm's law is the voltage difference equals current times resistance. And a lot of times you'll see it as V equals I times R, where V equals voltage and the unit for volts is V. And I equals current, and the unit for current is going to be our amperes, which is going to be A. And then R is going to be for resistance, and our unit for resistance is going to be the ohm. And then here's our omega symbol, which re represents our resistance. Then over here, we have our voltage triangle, which helps you to calculate voltage. So if I want to solve for voltage, I will put my finger over the V, and then we will have I times R. If I want to solve for my current, I'll put my finger over the I, which gives us V divided by R. And then if I want to solve for resistance, I'll put my finger over the R, which would give us V divided by I. So now let's solve the following problems using your knowledge of Ohm's law. Remember, do not forget your units. So I'll go ahead and do the first problem for you, just so you get an idea of how to set up and solve the problems. And if you notice, I go ahead and put my units to solve for Ohm's law, which is, or to solve for voltage, which is V equals I times R. So number one, an alarm clock draws 0.5 amps of current. So 0.5 amps of current, that's my current. So I go ahead and put that right there, 0.5 amps, make sure I put up my unit. And then it says when connected to a 120 volt circuit. So a 120 volt circuits, that's our voltage. So let's put that 120 volt V. Calculate its resistance. So that's what we're solving for resistance. So we don't know what that is, but we do know in order to solve for resistance is R equals resistance equals voltage divided by current. So I'm going to take 120, 120 volts and divide it by 0.5 amps. And when I put it in the calculator, that's going to give us a resistance of 240 ohms. So now go ahead and do problems two through six and make sure you solve for the missing components. Now for problems four through six, the missing component is always gonna have a question mark beside it. And you can use your voltage or your Ohm's law triangle in order to solve for them. Now go ahead and pause the video now and come around to your desk to ensure that you're properly solving your problems. So let's go ahead and begin now. And now let's take a look at our relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. So as voltage increases, which is the amount of force electrical charges are pushed with, current increases as well, which is the flow of electrical charges and vice versa. This means if the voltage is high, the current is high, and if the voltage is low, then the current is low. So the easiest way to see this is if voltage is high, our current is high. And then if voltage is low, our current is low. So this will represent a direct relationship. And then if we increase the resistance in a circuit, the current goes down for a given voltage. And if we decrease the resistance, the current goes up. So let's take a look at this right here. So we have our resistance. So as we increase the resistance, our current decreases. And then as we decrease our resistance, our current increases. 
So this would be an inverse relationship because as one goes up, the other one goes down. And this means that if resistance is high, current is low. And if resistance is low, current is high. So now it's time for our check for understanding. And you're going to answer the following questions using your knowledge of Ohm's law. Make sure you take your time and go through the notes that you have went over during, throughout this video. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. I hope this tutorial of Ohm's Law was beneficial and helpful. And make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.